today we come to the last uh, look at the character of Joseph and we continue on uh, from chapter 40. Uh, in the first half of the uh, character study we looked at uh, his care and heart. Uh, we thought how Joseph learned to care and shepherd the flock from young. And we noted the time note in Genesis chapter 37 that Joseph was 17 years old. Uh, when we first come across him uh, in scripture. And we noticed how that caring heart was to help him, was to help him when he got to Polypha's house uh, and how to manage things. And it was to help him when he got to the prison. And it was to help him eventually when uh, he became the Prime Minister of Egypt. He was to uh, not only be wise and discreet, as Pharaoh says, but he had to be compassionate and care for people when they came uh, and they said, we have no bread. Then the second characteristic was, second characteristic, uh, was his godliness. Uh, we see in Genesis 39, time and time again, it says that the Lord uh, was with Joseph. Whether it was uh, Egypt and Potiphar's house, having been sold as a slave by his brothers and rejected, or whether it was the prison after the false accusation by Potiphar's wife, uh, we read that the Lord was with him. Uh, and that's something we must remember for our own lives, that whatever situation or problem or difficulty that we face, uh, today the Lord is with us and is able to comfort and help us in that situation. Then the third characteristic was his trustworthiness. Uh, we thought of Potiphar, how he trusted everything to Joseph apart from the actual food that he put into his mouth. Uh, he gave Joseph that authority over all, it says, uh, his house and all, all the things that he had. And then uh, when we thought think of Joseph being put in prison, uh, we think of the prison officer and how he entrusted Joseph uh, the responsibility to look after the prisoners. Uh, and that showed uh, the trustworthiness uh, of Joseph. And then the last characteristic we looked at last time was his holiness. We see when Polypus wife came with a temptation that Joseph had a fear of God and understand of the holiness of God that caused it wickedness. Uh, and of course it shows that Joseph was yielded to God. His relationship with the Lord was so strong uh, that it was able to overcome temptation and it's one of the few examples in scripture of a positive way to overcome temptation in fact we could contrast Genesis 39 with the uh, temptation of David 2 Samuel and chapter 11 and so the two are contrasted with each other uh, let's just pray first before we go to the next characteristics our God and Father, give thanks for your word. Thank you for this time together to read it. I pray you'll help us as we look at these characteristics, help us to learn the lessons, and to give you thanks and glory. To give thanks in the Saviour's name. Amen. So we're going to turn to Genesis chapter 40, uh, and the next characteristic is the patience uh, of Joseph. Genesis chapter 40. Uh, I will break in uh, in this section. Uh, at verse 14, Genesis chapter 40, verse 15. Now Joseph is in prison. Uh, he's been put there uh, by Polypher after Polypher's wife false accusation. Uh, and uh, we'll read uh, this particular section. Genesis chapter 40, uh, verse 4, 14 and 15. Genesis 40, verse chapter 40. Verse 14, but remember me when it's well with you, and please show me kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh, and get me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away from the land of Hebrews, and also I have done nothing here. They should put me into this dungeon. Joseph had two good reasons for seeking his release, being sold by his brothers into slavery, and then being framed by Polypha's wife. In both cases he was the innocent victim. Presumably the bot would recognise the unfairness of Joseph's condition, since he himself had been unfairly charged and badly treated as well. And of course we know uh, from chapter 41, verse 1, uh, then it came to pass at the end of two full years, <coughs> Pharaoh had a dream, and behold, he stood uh, by the river. And then if we uh, drop down, Uh, the verse uh, 
thought his servants or device was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Uh, verse 45, Pharaoh called Joseph's names Athnath and Ea, and he gave him as a wife Asenath, the daughter of Polyphera, priest of On. And Joseph went over all the land of Egypt. Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And so 13 years had passed since he had been sold uh, by his brothers. And here we see uh, a major, major lesson that is uh, patience. Joseph experienced two years in prison and uh, 13 years uh, from his brothers. They were sold, uh, sorry, selling him to the Ishmaelites uh, for God to intervene on his behalf. Here we learn a really important lesson in our lives. We need to wait patiently upon God uh, in all circumstances. And the book of Genesis, of course, teaches this. Uh, we go right back to Genesis chapter 8 in relation to Noah. Genesis 8 verse 13. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, in the first day of the month, the walls were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the cover of the ark, and looked, and indeed the surface of the ground was dry. In the second month, in the 27th day of the month, the earth was dried. Then God spake to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Uh, bring out every living thing of flesh that is with you. You will see Noah had to wait uh, uh, for God's time and for God's command to go out of the ark. Even though uh, the walls were dried up from the earth, Noah had to wait until God said, Go out uh, of the ark. So Noah had to wait upon God. Then uh, we come to the life of Abraham. Genesis chapter 18, uh, verse 11, now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore Sarah laughed in herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure in my Lord being old also? And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Surely I bear a child, since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah will have a son. Here we see Abraham and Sarah uh, had to wait uh, upon God. And then there was Isaac, Genesis 25, uh, verse 21. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, uh, conceived. Uh, Isaac prayed passionately <coughs> for his wife. Isaac waited 20 years <coughs> for God to grant his prayer. Uh, Rebecca experienced a period of infertility just like Sarah, Rachel and Leah. And then of course we know uh, they were twins. And so we see that uh, Noah, Abraham, Joseph, Isaac all had to wait upon God in prayer. And then of course uh, this idea of waiting upon God is not just a Passive way upon God, but there's a reliance upon God. Isaiah chapter 40, uh, well known verse, verse 31. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not be faint. The eagle depicts the strength that comes from the Lord. The Lord describes the deliverance of the Israelites. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 4, as being lifted up on the eagle's strong wings. In Psalm 103, the strength of people are nourished, uh, who are nourished by God is compared to the strength of an eagle. Here we see this idea of mount up, run, and walk depicts a spiritual transformation that faith brings to a person who waits with confident expectation and active hope in the Lord. And this is what uh, Joseph had learned, and he learned it in the difficult place but also we ourselves uh, must learn that as well Romans chapter 12 and verse 12 Romans 12 and verse 12 rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation continuing steadfastly uh, in prayer uh, patient in tribulation often we uh, are not patient when those trials and tests come then we come to the next characteristic, Genesis chapter 45. And this chapter uh, is the revelation of Joseph to his brothers. Uh, remember there was seven years of famine, seven years of plenty, then seven years of famine. 
And then, of course, uh, in the years of famine, uh, Joseph's brothers ran out of food. Jacob sends them, really in desperation, more than anything else. And the brothers, of course, are now going to Joseph. Joseph recognizes them. They don't recognize him. Genesis 45. I'll pick it up at verse uh, 4. Joseph said to his brothers, Please come there to me. So they came there. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now, but now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years the famine has been in the land. There are still five years in which there shall be neither plowing nor harvesting. Then verse 14 of the same chapter. And he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept on his neck. And this was his brother. Uh, the other brothers were ready as half-brothers. Moreover, he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Uh, and of course, here we have the reunited the reunion uh, of the brothers. Joseph held no grudges against the brothers for their treatment of him. Instead, they possessed a loving and forgiving spirit. Uh, and we must learn, we must never, we will never be useful for God unless we learn to forgive. And two passages, of course, we can turn when we come to the New Testament and relate that to ourselves. These are chapter 4. And verse 32. The last verse uh, of that chapter. Ephesians 4, verse 32. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And then, of course, chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God. And whilst uh, that points forward, as, as in the love of walking love, it also points back to the kindness, the tender heartness, and the forgiveness. Uh, those are ways which we can imitate God uh, in our lives. And then the other reference is the Colossians, uh, verse 3, chapter 3, sorry, and verse 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, Humility, make this long suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. And these passages, of course, and many other teachers by the importance of forgiveness. And then we go to the last chapter for the last characteristic of Joseph, Genesis chapter 50. And then we come to 24 and 25. So we're near the end of the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 50, verse 24 and 25. Joseph said to his brothers, I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you stop page. Bring you out to land to the land which he swore to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Then Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God will surely bless you, you should carry out my bones from here. Here we see the faith uh, of Joseph. And that's really the last uh, characteristic, is his faith. Joseph, with his last words, shows his faith in God by reassuring his family, his descendants, that God would bring them and his bones into the land of Canaan. This, of course, was uh, God's promise. And it reminds us uh, of the importance of faith in our lives. Hebrews chapter 11 uh, says of Joseph Hebrews chapter 11 <coughs> verse 22 by faith Joseph when he was dying made mention of departure of the children of Israel and gave instruction concerning his bones and of course the same chapter in verse 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please him, but he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is the reward of those who diligently seek him. And so we see Joseph's faith in God. And so two sort of final thoughts, just in general, the life of Joseph. God is more interested in our character and our comfortableness. Joseph's life, 13 years of Joseph's life, was very difficult, sold by his brothers, sold to a foreign country, falsely accused, put into prison for another two years before God intervened, 13 years before God took him out of the prison and gave him responsibility. And all this shows us is 
uh, that God uh, used those uh, trials and situations to develop Joseph's character. And then secondly, character is what we are in the dark. And here we see the character of Joseph uh, reminds us so greatly of the character of Christ. And then the last point is, what is our uh, example? What example are we setting? First Timothy 4, uh, verse 12 says, Let no man despise thy youth, be that example to believers in word, and I'll say in what we say, our conversation, uh, that's our behavior, our, our love, our spirit, our enthusiasm, our faithfulness, and our purity in Joseph's life. I uh, pose witness to this verse. Let's just pray. Father, we pray we'll be the example that you want us to be. Father, we pray that we'll be more like Christ in each day. We pray specifically and help us to be patient. Help us, Lord, to uh, have faith in God. And help us, Lord, to be willing to forgive. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for your words. I pray you take these thoughts and make us more like Christ, we pray. We ask it all for the glory of God in the Saviour's name. Amen.